This is a video on granulation. And what I did is I originally, I just finished the video that I was going to post. Um, and it was ju it just outlined the process of granulation. But then it dawned on me that like people want to understand why you're granulating. This is the best explanation I could find. It's uh, Smoke Generation Tactical Survival Civilian, Gary Purrington. I have a link on my website, but I'm going to read this to you. Vaporized materials must be allowed to escape the confines of ash freely. Once powdered, densely molded compositions produce a more solidly dense formed ash, ash column, that obstructs free vapor escape. The answer is not variant component particles or compressed powder columns, but a working combination of molding the composition within the case, supplying a center core, and or granulating the composition and or granulating the composition. Okay. Both provide an escape route for the vaporized materials, but they vary in combustion rate. A solid formed grain using powdered composition with a center core will combust more slowly than a pressed granulated composition, the latter having the larger surface area and therefore the faster combustion rate. A combination of the two will yield the highest combination rates and therefore larger volumes of smoke per second of burn. The, the granulating process takes place following full homogeneity of mixed component materials with a small percentage of a compatible binder. This is my INV83. I just released this device. We have a TPA composition in here, right? So this is actually a granulated composition. Can you see it? This is a granulated composition that I packed. We, we compressed it, right? And then we, we put in a central core here with this igniter, this little wire igniter. This is all it is. Rolled up hardware screen. <laughs> Three inches by two inches or something, or an inch and a half. Rolled up, and then on the bottom of this, we have a flutter valve here. Just a silicone valve. That is to prevent flare-ups, which this composition loves to do. But what we have is a binder is cellulose acetate, so we've granulated this and then compressed it, right? Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because when, when it's done, I want you to see how the ash forms. It's fucking awesome. And then this is the, it, the fuse, right? This is a, an M228 fuse with a Fisco coming down. Anyway, these are available on my website too. Just came out yesterday. All right, so I'm going to ignite this, or I'm going to set this off down here. That was beautiful. Oh my god. All right, so I'm gonna go grab my welding gloves and pick this thing up. The cool thing about this smoke mix is that it will settle back down if a drift brings it up. It will lower. The rate at which it lowers is dependent on the humidity of its environment. Anyway, so. Oh man, how could somebody be so obsessed with smoke? <laughs> you know what it is? It's all energetic compositions. The problem is, is I can only do stuff that's legal, you know? All right, so here's the, the flutter valve, right? Now I'm gonna take off the lid. <laughs> Look, so it returns, this is fucking, this blows my mind. It returns to the shape of the original granules. These are a little clumped up. So what, what that book is saying is that when this composition burns, it creates an ash column that is open, you know? And so there are more reasons to granulate these compositions besides just, particularly smoke compositions. It's not just a matter of increasing the combustion rate and surface area. It's also a matter of creating a route for the 
for the smoke to escape, which I thought was fucking fascinating. Anyway, here's how you granulate shit. <laughs> All right, this is the process for granulation. You take your, your power technic composition. This actually is, there's some granulated compound mixed in here already because I mixed it up like a lazy person. But, um, and uh, this is 4% cellulose acetate dissolved in acetone. So that's approximately one ounce of cellulose acetate per quart of acetone. We'll give you a, approximately a 4% solution. This is 3.85, but um, that is the adequate ratio for the binder. You do not wanna go, if you go under that, then you'll get a crumbly, you know, the, uh, it won't bind very well. It won't bind hard enough. And if you go over that, you're gonna to have to adjust your oxidizer ratio in the composition. So that's for cellulose acetate. It varies obviously from binder to binder, depending on the percentage of whatever oxidizer you already have in your composition. But this is a similar process for making ungraded black powder or for granulating ungraded black powder, like, you know, where you have it all mixed together for like burst charges or whatever. Um, but yeah, what we're basically doing is just making it one giant ball of dough or multiple little ones. It might make more sense, actually. You want to keep it, you don't want to oversaturate it because then uh, you're throwing off the composition again. So I might have to add a little bit of this mixture here because I added too much. You want just enough to keep it into one solid ball. And always make sure you use a bowl that's too small. That's the other trick. All right, now we switch over to hands. Yeah, there's a cute little ball right there. Put the lid on this. All right, and then you take the ball and just run it, I'm running, this is a four mesh screen. You can use up to a 10 mesh screen. And just get it into these little granules. Spread them out uh, over a surface to dry in the sun. <laughs> Neighbors are going to think I'm <laughs> making cookies. cookies.